The new Congress still faces a multitude of tasks. Among the more controversial issues are tax reduction and appropriations for the armed forces. Congress also will soon tackle the many problems of labor and adjust, by legislation, some of the more pressing problems this, that have Congress been Congress that. Settled. Father, turn that thing off. The first things to be taken up by the legislature. Got other things to think about besides Congress. Came home early to finish this income tax. And to write that speech to give it the club. Where's the staff? Oh, I used the last one yesterday. Why don't you run down to the post office and get some? Run down to the post office? It's only a mile away. You see? Congress can do everything. Everything except build us another post office. Two threes in an air mail. Afternoon, Bentley. Hello, Williams. Suppose you're going down to register. Register? For what? Why? For the congressional elections this fall. Don't forget, we want Pierce for Congress. Pierce for Congress. Yeah. I don't care a hang who gets to Congress. Yes, but what's Congress ever given me except a lot of trouble? Like this income tax. Has Congress given us the new post office we need? Well, but... No. You know what I think? I think we'd all be better off if there wasn't any Congress. Hereby declare this Congress to be suspended indefinitely. Stale? The man who wants to buy stale. There aren't any more stale. Can't you read? Congress is gone. So is the postal system. The Williams Postal Service will deliver letters for a dollar an ounce. But not these dollars. United States money is no good. See, Congress had the power to issue money, but no more. Only New York money is good here. Go over to the currency exchange, Bentley, and take your letters. But don't bother about mailing this income tax. There's nobody to collect federal taxes. Oh, yes. Lots of things are different without the powers of Congress. You'll see. <laughs> Pretty, aren't they? You see, every state is printing its own money now. You remember? Oh, you don't believe it about Congress being suspended. Well, go ahead. Go to Washington. See for yourself. <laughs> A round trip ticket to Washington? That'll be 600 New York dollars. That's right, Bentley. You're catching on. No Congress. No regulation of commerce. No regulation of railroad fares. Oh, you don't like it. You want to take it to court. Go ahead. Don't be so surprised, Bentley. The states have to create their own armies and navies and air forces because there's no Congress to provide for national defense. <laughs> Complaining about that high railroad fare is useless, Bentley. No Congress, no federal court. There just is no justice. <laughs> Back at the old office, eh, Bentley? Just in time for your check. Oh, yes, it's more than usual. No deduction for savings bonds or income tax or social security. With Congress suspended, the whole social security system has fallen through. So you'll have to look out for yourself when you lose your job. That's what I said. Lose your job. One of those miscellaneous powers of Congress is the regulation of patents. We have no protection. We're out of business. So 
Charles! Charles! Oh, Charles, we're being put out on the street. The state bank foreclosed on our house. They said the national housing act was null and void and our FHA loan was no good. And Charles! Oh, I don't know what will become of us, Charles. Charles, get up. Huh? Oh. Oh, come now. Don't tell me that little walk to the post office tired you off. Post office? What post office? I mean, with Congress suspended and... Oh, what a dream. Martha, that's it. What? Now I know what to put in my speech for the club. And so, gentlemen, my topic is the powers of Congress. None of us ever hesitates to criticize Congress at every opportunity. But how many ever stop to think about the broad powers of Congress and how these powers affect every one of us? The importance of Congress can be seen when we note... We note that the framers of the Constitution devoted the very first article to that branch of our government. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. Consider the wide-reaching powers of Congress. Laying taxes, regulating commerce, coining money, establishing post offices. Creating federal courts. Declaring war, providing an army and navy, and making all laws necessary for carrying out those powers. Now, gentlemen, these powers reach right into our homes, into our very lives. For instance, we know that the food we eat is pure. Why? Because it's inspected under laws made through the power of Congress to regulate interstate commerce. This same power includes control of railroad fares and freight rates, the commerce of the air, and the traffic of cross-country trucking. Congress even limits the number of hours we work and the minimum salaries we're paid. This is done under its authority to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers. These are commonly called the implied powers. The first use of these implied powers was the establishment operates under congressional authorization. Of course, everybody knows that Congress has the power to levy taxes, and we're always ready to complain about taxes. Taxes on perfume and other luxury items and on gasoline and other things that are not luxuries. But we're not so ready to appreciate what we get from Congress in return. The network of federal highways that span our nation, the great reclamation and power developments, our magnificent national parks and forests, protection of our health, promotion of foreign trade, assistance given farmers through such things as crop insurance and scientific information and assistance given homeowners through agencies like the Federal Housing Administration. And remember, gentlemen, those are only a few illustrations of how the powers of Congress affect each one of us. So your personal welfare, as well as the welfare of your country, depends upon your active interest in electing to Congress men and women of such Bentley, how are you? Fine, just fine. Say, I'm going down in the morning to register. I was wondering if you'd like to ride down with me. I want to talk to you about this man, Pierce. Pierce? You mean you're interested in getting him elected to Congress? I'm interested in knowing more about him. After all, we can't be too careful who we send to Washington to exercise the vast powers of Congress. 